All right, Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? Hope you're doing well, and I hope you're ready for battle. Because that's exactly what we got. We got a Rome 2 battle. It's a 3 versus 3. We've got some very powerful factions on the field today. So if we're looking at them, we got Rome and, Mas and Massilia. So we got Rome and Massilia and their third ally, because this is a 3 versus 3. Over on the other side, this is the Seleuc Seleucids. The Seleucids, however you want to say it. So yeah, very, very powerful faction. Now on the defense... We've got another Greek faction here. We've got uh, Syracuse. Syracuse on uh, defense. We've got Egypt. Very cool. Look at these Egyptians here. The well, like Hellenistic Egyptians. And then we've got... Let's see where... Uh, I, I believe it's Kush. Yeah, it's Kush. Which is literally the ultimate Roman killers because of their faction style. They do very well against heavily armored factions, and that's, well, that's Rome for you. Uh, but yeah, the forces are making their push to the walls, and it looks like, look at this. We do have multiple units, look at this, from Syracuse. I am personally against this maneuver here. I don't like having players have multiple units on multiple fronts, because that creates a lot of issue. Oh, excuse me. A little burp came out of there. It creates a lot of issues with micromanaging. So, um, again, it's all up to you when you play. But when I play, I try to keep most of my army, if not all of my army, on one section of the defense. So here we go. The Romans are bringing down the walls. We got a tower that's a little shy. They're deciding to, you know, they're deciding to back up a little bit. They're like, I don't, I don't know about this. Actually, you know what? We're going in. We're going in. Okay, maybe. Or they're just chilling back there. I don't know what they're doing. I guess they're just getting the towers in position. They got to be careful, though, because they can catch on fire and be destroyed. So they kind of have to commit. And I would just go ahead and commit right here. And it does look like he's going to try to destroy this artillery with the tortoise. Can this actually bring down the wall? I don't know. I think it'll just destroy the artillery placement here. I don't think it's actually going to bring down the wall. We'll see. A couple more knocks here. And this uh, wall is going to be looking like paper mache. Ready? Here we go. Knock, knock. All right, one more. Here we go. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. I don't know. That just kind of seems like a waste. I don't know. It's not terrible. They've got a lot of tortoises, so... But a lot of these towers are gonna catch on fire. They're already smoking. So, they gotta get going there, and they, they gotta keep up the attack. Now, back over on this front. Uh, same kind of strategy going on. And this is a bit more challenging for the Seleucids here, because they have to rely on themselves. They don't really have any allied support. Where, you know, on the defensive side, the defensive perspective... They can easily support each other because it's much faster just cutting through these streets to get to the other side. It's still pretty far, but uh, yeah, uh, it's still, it's easier for the defenders to work together. And that's why, personally, I don't like attacking alone uh, when I'm on attack. Well, obviously when I'm attacking, but like I like to stay somewhat close to allies so they can help me or vice versa. I can help them. Uh, but we do have some hillmen, the first to enter the streets of the city. And then over here, we've got some Egyptian infantry. Nothing too expensive in terms of unit quality. But he does have some infantry ready to hold the walls. Over on this side, we've got some hillmen holding, ready to advance. I'm not really seeing that great of quality troops here from the Seleucids. It's a lot of hillmen. A lot of cheap troops it makes me kind of wonder. Now back here they have their more professional troops like the throw of spears and stuff. But look at this over here. Look at this over here. Massilia, 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 Massilia. <laughs> they are pushing a decently sized force on the flank. And quite frankly, I don't see any defenders over on this side. So this might be a great surprise attack uh, for Massilia. We'll see how that plays out, but uh, and they're they're also attacking over here. Got 
guys, look at this. They're, they've come out of the woodwork. Actually, I don't think... Oh, no, a lot of them are hidden here. So, Massilia is getting very crafty with his attacks. Rome is more than capable of keeping this entire force busy. And so, I like what they're doing here. It's a very elaborate strategy. It's a, it's a little bit more challenging in terms of micro. Because uh, Massilia is going to have to micro two fronts. This front, and then this front over here. Which, uh, they've yet to begin begun to attack these walls over here. But, there is a unit of Kush soldiers. These are just swordsmen. So, Kush swordsmen are not top tier. They're not the worst unit, but they're certainly not top tier. They are going to throw some hate, though, to the Massilians. And they're going to throw back and give them a taste of their own medicine. There we go. Thorax Swordsmen are going to easily win this, but look at this. Okay, reinforcements are here. Shotel Warriors. Uh, we got some Axemen which have a lot of projectile capabilities. So, uh, thankfully, they are paying attention, and the defenders realize, hey, it's not too much of a big deal because we can hold this entire section of our city by one little point. So it's going to be a tough fight for them. Back over this way, good news for the defending side. They have shifted over some Glacian swordsmen, uh, so they are prepared, at least somewhat, for this flanking attack. And they are just going to bring down this entire section of wall. Look at that. Let's go back over to this side and see what the uh, Seleucids are doing. The Seleucids kind of... They kind of moved up their hillmen. They... I, I assume they absorbed some ammo. They probably threw some of their own ammo as well. And now they're going to move up their more professional forces. Now that the heavy lifting is done by the peasant hillmen, uh, the more, you know, it makes sense because you want to keep your stronger troops away from dying from projectiles, right? You want your stronger troops to die in close combat. That's where you'll get the best out of them. Uh, so yeah, he's going to move up and the Egyptians kind of fell back there a little bit. Uh, with their forces here, so they're gonna give them some room here It's gonna be interesting to see how this plays because what could happen is I'm pretty sure they can run through here, right? I don't know. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure they can run through here and if they do that um, They could flank these forces that are coming in uh, which could be a good play by the defenders Let's go back over to this side and see what the Romans are doing. The Romans have made some ground here or should I say the defenders kind of let them take some ground. Uh, again, another position that's fairly easy to defend by two points here. Here and here. And then here comes the Seleucids. As they advance forward with light hoplites. Some Hostadi ready to engage. They form Testudo. Interestingly enough. Why? Okay, and then they break it. Well, maybe. It's like they formed Testudo because I guess they were anticipating some projectiles of some sort. Uh, but that does not happen. Now they're going to use what their advantage is against Hoplites, which is projectiles, using projectiles themselves uh, before they engage. That is huge right there. Smart play by the Romans. Uh, really what the Hoplites want to do is push forward and fight. They don't want to sit back and just get a face full of, uh, you know, Pila. Not a good situation. Now back over here, we got some Kujite slave infantry still holding the streets. They're going to be accompanied with some more Hastati ready to uh, move in whenever needed. Let's go back over to this side where a very great stand by Kush and Egypt uh, breaking down the Thorax Swordsman. So this is nice. Uh, what this does here is it puts a lot of pressure on... It, it puts pressure on the defenders in the sense that they have multiple points they have to pay attention to. But at the current rate, I don't see the attackers breaking through this defense. But maybe that's not the point. Back over this way, the fight has really picked up as well. As you can see, they've destroyed the walls behind them. They've, they've stormed in. And they are using pure brute force in numbers to overwhelm the defenders. You, you can even see they've found some gaps in the line which the Egyptian, Egyptians are trying to maintain. So what the attackers are doing here, they're, the, they're doing the 
you know, attacking 101, spreading out the defenders as much as possible, and basically finding a weak spot in the defense. Let's go back over to this other side where the Seleucids are also fully engaging in. And sure enough, they I don't think it is possible to go through these pillars, you know? The troops are just like, I don't know, the spacing on those pillars don't seem wide enough for us to go through. Maybe they can. Again, I'm not really remembering, but it's been a while since I played this map. Uh, but yeah, we've got troops that are uh, Thorax Swordsmen taking on the Egyptian infantry. They will win this battle pretty uh, pretty well. Like, it's going to be... Uh, there is a unit of... Let's see, what is this? They do have some Thorax Swordsmen, Thorax Swordsmen for the Egyptians as well, but it's just one unit. They're definitely going to have to send up reinforcements. Egypt and Seleucids are over here trying to support this front. Over on this side, it's kind of the opposite. Uh, they're holding these positions with a few troops, and I like the fact that the Seleucids are holding back here. They're not necessarily going full sail in. You know, they're just kind of sitting back here. But here's the thing, guys. There is an opening here. This is not good. Uh, so the Seleucids could sneak in, go through the streets, and flank behind uh, the Egyptians here. So, uh, I think all that Mas the Massalians have to do here is just kind of hold the enemy, keep them occupied, kind of act as an anvil. And if there's even if a, like a cav unit, that would be awesome. They had a cav unit, but I don't think they do. So, they should probably start rushing down this way and try to help uh, their allies break through this defense because, I, well, I don't, it's pretty even. Let's go back over to the other side and see how the Romans are performing. The Romans are doing very well, and he's playing the Romans exactly as you should be playing, which is rare, guys. I mean, most of the time when we see Roman players, they're pretty bad, right? And the reason for that is because newer players get excited about Rome. I mean, who doesn't? And so they just play them a lot, and they don't understand the game uh, completely. So, but it looks like this player knows what he's doing. He's using the superior Roman infantry with their Pila. He's basically using this infantry as as effectively as possible to their fullest potential. He's got some legionary cohort. And they probably got some ammo left over. That's why he's moving them up. And yep, that's exactly what they're doing. They're saving lives by not engaging and they're trying to use up, exhaust all of their munition before they, before they charge in. And I think... They're going to do it again. Honestly, the best thing to do here is probably just engage them. But I'm kind of curious, like, why does Kush not have more Shotel Warriors? Are they dedicated completely over here? It looks like they are. And look at this. No, more Swordsmen. Kushite Slaves, Swordsmen. Where are the Shotel Warriors? I thought for sure we would see a ton of them. More Slave Infantry. I guess they're just going for numbers rather than quality where are the kushites or the the shotel yeah they're fighting up on the walls yeah i i don't know i feel like that's a little bit of a mistake there and you know as this fight goes on over here it does it, there okay there is a shotel warrior in here there's one you should have at least four of them maybe he's saving them in reserve i don't know but if, if this continues like it is without any reinforcements from the defenders, the attackers are going to easily break through here. Easily break through. Now back over this way. Uh, the fight's going pretty well for Egypt. Um, no reinforcements made it. Interesting. Interesting. He did not do what I thought he was going to do. He did not push any units this way. And now it's kind of too late. I don't think he's going to go for it. But... Uh, the Seleucids have decided to dedicate a lot of their forces on this main uh, fight in the opening courtyard right behind the gate. So very cool stuff right there. Very cool stuff. Now back over on this side, the Seleucids are dwindling down. Guys, it's not looking good for the attackers at this point. Really, the best point, uh, the best position the attackers have is where Rome is. Rome is still very healthy. They still have most of their units. 
They've taken control of the walls up here. They're rushing forward infantry to take down, take on these breach points. But here's the thing, guys. If all the other attackers fail, it's going to be very difficult for Rome to come out on top here. Because what's going to happen is that once the defenders uh, are victorious over on this side, once they're victorious over here, they're going to be able to shift a lot of units over to Rome and just, you know, overwhelm Rome. So we'll, we'll see what happens here, but it's looking like the Seleucids are gaining some good ground right behind the main gate over on this side of the city. They are pushing back the defenders. Not so much over here. Uh, it's still a bit of a brawl, but I think the defenders, if nothing changes, if nobody sends reinforcements to this fight, I'm pretty sure the defenders will win this engagement. So we'll see how that plays out. And it does appear that they're shifting over archers over to a different side of the battle. And yeah, they're just kind of falling back to a more uh, a, a different choke points. We do have some unit of spears moving in. This is a little risky because he can get hit from two sides. Looks like he doesn't really care. He is sending up some more infantry to support. Okay, he's being a little hesitant here. Oh, he can get hit by three sides, guys. That is silly. So Lucid's got to... I would just hold him right here. I guess he's trying to get some... What are these? The spears? Yeah. There we go. Very, very nice. So I think he was just moving them up, trying to get some easy hits on these Thorax swords. He only really kills two of them. I don't know if that was worth it, but he's going to form up most likely here. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But yeah, it's looking really good for the defenders on this front. Uh, over here, uh, it's very close. I think if the defenders send one more unit, they can maintain this choke point and keep uh, the attackers back. And then over on this front, the Romans are continuing. To, uh, really, they're doing what they're made to do. The ultimate wood chipper unit. Here comes another push of units. Kujite slave infantry going in. Now we've got legionary cohort. They're just kind of chilling back here. I assume they're, they've got some ammo they can exhaust before they engage. There's a small fight over here. Again, swordsmen. These swordsmen are no match to these cohorts. They will fall so quickly. And they're getting blasted with arrows. It's not a good sight for the uh, for the Kuzates. For Kush. Not the Kuzates. Oh, my God. Kush. Oh, my gosh. How many times have I been saying Kuzates? The Kushite. The Kush. Oh, dude, I've been playing way too much Bannerlord. I am so sorry. You guys probably have corrected me like 30 times in the comments already. Like, you moron! This isn't Bannerlord! Yeah, so they're fighting the good fight there. And then back over this way, they're still kind of holding off here. Uh, the Syracuse and Egyptians have won their struggle against the Seleucids. Looking at what's left of the Seleucids, they don't have to worry about this anymore. Yeah, they can go ahead and shift over and deal what's left of the Seleucids. And I, I gotta say, man, it's looking really good for the defenders. It's looking so good for the defenders. I just don't see them losing this side of the battle if anything the defenders should get aggressive and try to wipe out these units so they don't have to worry about it and then they can shift all of their attention over to the romans which by the way the romans are doing great the romans are literally the last hope for the attackers the last hope so they got to keep it up and it even looks like uh, the Roman ally, uh, Massilia, they are joining the Romans. They've kind of given up on the flanking maneuvers and have joined the Romans in their struggle to break through this, uh, this objective. Yeah, see over here, they've completely, not completely, but 
There potentially could be a gap here he can maneuver around and get behind these guys to quickly break them. I mean, I say go for it. Try to take them out. There's no calf. You notice that? Other than the Roman general, which he has to bring calf. There's like no calf. Oh, there we go. There's a calf unit. I stand corrected. So yeah, they're going to put up a good fight, guys, right here. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see how these Romans uh, grind their way through these defenders. Now, the big question here, the big question mark is, what do you do as the Seleucids? And I think they're doing exactly what they should be doing right here. They're taking their time. They're And they're going to be, even though he stands against a force that is probably like two times his strength, he's going to try to bring down at least... This would be my, my mindset. I would think, okay, the Romans are doing pretty good on the other side. What I need to do now is try to bring down and weaken the forces that stand against me. To hope, hopefully to weaken them, weaken them enough to where they can't finish off the Romans. But we'll see what the Seleucids can do. The Seleucids are still pretty strong too. They've still got Thorax Swordsmen. Thorough Spears got a lot of archers. They've got the Royal Peltis, which can decimate units. It can destroy units. And then we got some Royal Peltis for the general as well. Let's not forget, we got the general hoplite for uh, Mesesali. So there's a lot of decent units here that can cause some trouble. And that's probably why the Seleucids and... Uh, I'm sorry, not the Seleucids. The Syracuse and um, Egypt are still here with a hefty force. They realize that this is no cakewalk. This is still going to be an issue. Look at this. They're sending in a lot of units here. I almost don't like this. They only they almost have too many units pushing into this defensive position. Interesting. Now back over here. Swordsmen still trying to hold back the hordes of Rome. They got units in the back in uh, Testudo. It must be experiencing some uh, projectile fire. And now it's looking like it's a little bit of a struggle here. We got some chariots coming in from Kush. Chariots coming in. And this is what they do best. Let's see how many kills do they have. 100, almost 200 kills. Not, it's pretty good, but nothing like crazy good. But they're still not done yet. And look at you can see the Roman generals like, Psych, I'm out of there. Psych, I'm not fighting this mess. Oh my gosh. Look at these chariots. Go! This is is this the nail in the coffin? Did it completely deflate the attackers? Oh, there we go. Now they're racking up the kills. Hold on, what do they got? What do they got? I can't. Oh, uh, how many? 324 kills. And guys, I know that, I mean, I'm sure you've seen chariots with more kills, but remember, a lot of those kills are quality Roman troops. That is a strong 300 kills. And now more forces are coming in. Oh, man. Rome still looks pretty good, though. And he's got Praetorian Guard moving in as well, which is like the best of the best from the Roman army. So, uh, the question is, can they break through these defenses with what they have left? I think they can, even with that chariot charge. But here's the thing. Even if they break through, they're going to be extremely weak. And taking on a strong Syracuse army is going to be challenging. What is going on over here? It's a little messy from Syracuse. A little messy. And now we've got some pikemen that have uh, been engaged Congratulations, you're engaged. No, uh, some pikemen, but naturally, Sarah, uh, the Seleucids are going to focus their fire on those pikemen. And uh, yeah, the pikemen are going to take cover, take shelter behind uh, this this nice building here, where it looks almost like an armory or something. Got some shields and helmets. This is cool. These little shields and helmets. That's fun. That's fun. All right, some more forces moving up. And I, yeah, I mean, again, the Seleucids are doing exactly what they need to do. Keep these guys busy. 
Look at how he's formed up here. I think finally, finally the defenders are like, all right, let's go in. Like, I think we have the force. Let's go in. And they're finally going to do that. Now, they're charging head first with the general. Uh, I don't know if I would do that. I get it. Like, the general is really good. But if you lose him early, it could be trouble. The balance of power is, is in favor of the defenders, guys. I mean, this is looking good for the, de uh, for the defenders. It's looking rough for the attackers. And they really need a miracle here to, 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 to win this one. I, I, Syracuse is kind of giving me anxiety right now. Uh, because they are really clumping up their troops. All right. They're really clumping up their troops. They don't need this many pikemen here. How many pikes do they got? Two? Just send one mixed in with some hoplites and you're good to go. What this is, basically, if I'm attacking, but like, uh, concert, all arch, all concert, concert, concentrate all archer fire on this blob right here. Do it. Do it now. Yeah, but uh, we'll see what happens with that. Back over this way, Rome is making progress. Rome is taking the field right now. And there's really not much standing in the way of Rome. Uh, so I think this is good, right? Because what... Okay, at this point, all the Seleucids, if they want to win this, all they have to do is just survive. And I feel like by the skill of the Syracuse... And I'm not throwing shade at Syracuse. I can tell the player's probably a little bit newer. The way he's blobbing up his troops... If he continues to do that and Rome gets behind these forces, oh, it's big trouble for the defenders. It is big trouble. And I love this. This epic struggle. These pikes pushing back the infantry. How long? And that's the thing is how long can they hold? How long can the Seleucids hold? They're sending in generals, both generals. Both attacking generals are in the fight. And guys, they're breaking the Egyptians. The Egyptians, no, no, you need this unit in there. You need more troops up there. Where are you going? Like at this point, the defenders, it's a race against the clock. And I'm not talking about the game clock. I'm talking about the Roman clock. They are coming. And they've got to defeat this uh, this army fast. And if they don't, they're in big doo-doo. And now there are some units from the Kujite army that are trying to slow down basically speed bumps for the advance of the Roman army. Which uh, is going to work a little bit. Oh, jeez. And yeah, they just won over here. This freed up a bunch of units over here. More archers that are going to get slaughtered by the Romans. Woo! Rome, Rome, Rome. What you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? You're going to you're going to surrender and join the Roman Empire and they're going to force upon their culture onto you in the most epic way. All right. So, uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, it does appear that the um, Seleucids, I'm sorry, Syracuse has broken through the Seleucids right here. And they're going to now push in. And really all the Seleucids have are small pockets of archers holding. But if they can break these Egyptians fast enough, they might be able to dedicate more units into the street and hold them back. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good for the defenders. I think, yeah, if they can get aggressive here. See, this is what they should have done right away. They should have gotten aggressive and attacked the... Like, as soon as they defeated this force here, the defenders should have just, like, full force. Like, ah! Ah! And just wipe out the Seleucids. Because if they did that right away, they would have defeated the Seleucids by now. And then they would have all of their force ready to take on the Romans. Now, they still have time. Well, are they going to go for a capture? Let's see. Hold on. Where is the capture point? They, I think it's... Isn't the capture point, like, somewhere over here? No. 
I don't know. I feel like it moves. Every time I play this game, I'm like, it's a different spot. This might be it here. That's probably why they have the general guarding it. Oh, man. The Seleucid just won over here? What's going on? Take out these royal peltas. Yeah, use some bows. Yeah, kill them from afar. You're better off doing that. Kill them from afar. And there we go. This is a problem. Look at all the sal Again, this, the, the Syracuse does not need to clump up like this. You could probably dedicate one or two units back this way. But there we go. They, they At this point, they pretty much defeated the Seleucids. So now it's it's pretty even. It's pretty even. Uh, I think because of some sloppy play by Syracuse here, I think Syracuse could have been a little bit more efficient on killing the Seleucids. But they still have a chance to win this. Uh, bounce power is even. And it's really going to come down to a tired Roman army if they're going to be able to take this. Now the forces are moving in. Ready to push. And what's really weird is that there's only two minutes left in this replay. And I don't know why. I feel like there's enough units from the Seleucids. Or I'm sorry, Syracuse. I, I, you know, they both start with the S. Uh, Syracuse to where this should be longer than a minute 38 now. Which is interesting. Very interesting. So, and they're not even engaging here. Alright, minute 21. Uh, it, all I can think is maybe they kill the general of the Yeah, maybe they kill the general of the Egyptians And there's their forces moving up moving around There they go Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Look at this. I love the fight I love the fight in these hoplites and in the royal pelt. Look at this guy. He's like surrounded his units like I will guard the rear of my unit. He's taking on like five units His royal pelt is he's like ah Get back you beast ah, No, Jim There's just something cool about a Greek named Jim, you know <laughs> Jimmy Jimmy boy All right, so the forces are moving up they're moving in for some reason, we have 22 seconds left in this replay. These forces have decided to retreat for some reason. We're down to 10 seconds. Oh my gosh. Syracuse is breaking here. Okay, then I guess at this point, the defenders won? How? No, the Seleucid. No, the attackers won. So I assume the defenders uh, admit defeat uh, in this battle, which is which. You know, honestly, seeing the Seleucids rally there, uh, seeing the Seleucids rally there, and um, I, I think the defenders. Uh, it's. <laughs> I mean, you would hope that the defenders would fight to the bitter end, but I feel like they just admit defeat. I don't think it was a desync because none of the units were acting weird. Usually when it's a desync, units will be like walking off to random places. But yeah, I guess the defenders just admit defeat. Um, so I'm sorry, guys. That's not exactly the ending I necessarily wanted, but... uh. It was an interesting battle that I think the attackers would have came out on top. Uh, so this was sent in by the Seleucid player, Lofted. Uh, so thank you for the battle replay. I'm actually surprised by how many kills the Kush army got. The Kuzates, as I called them many times. Uh, the Kush army got. I think the chariots really helped with that. But I think, look at this. They only brought two armored Shotel warriors. They should have just brought less armored Shotel Warriors and just more general Shotel Warriors. And I think they would have performed way better against the uh, the Romans and would have potentially won that battle. But 
Yeah, that was a fun fight. You can see the Salu Syracuse really struggled there. They definitely looked like a newer player, which, hey, you know, we're no, we're, it's okay. We're all new at one point. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to wrap up the battle, guys. Uh, I really enjoyed the Roman uh, fighting in this one. They got a lot of kills. I think they got the most. Oh, no, second most. No, 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 third most kills. So the Seleucids did a fantastic job. The uh, Egyptians did a fantastic job, too. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll come out with more epic battles in the future. I appreciate it, guys. And I'll see you next time on the battlefield.